Okay, I want to go over this comment here. Uh, this uh, broken rhyme says, Sorry, Pastor, I have nothing but respect for you, but you're seriously wrong on the issue, and you're waffling back and forth between conditional and unconditional security. You can't have it both ways. This is the problem with the once saved, always saved version of unconditional eternal security. If it is true that nothing can separate a believer from the love of God, then what the heretic John MacArthur teaches is true. A believer can take the mark of the beast, 666, and still be saved afterward. Do you really believe that in light of the scriptures clearly in light of what the scriptures clearly proclaim. And then I responded, you should est first establish what exactly is the mark of the beast. And then this fellow, he replies, he says, the scriptures already established that very plainly. And then he shares the quote. But then he, he doesn't elaborate on how the mark of the beast is applied to the world that we live in. Okay, I know what the Bible says. What I'm saying is, what exactly, exactly is kind of the key word. What exactly is the mark of the beast? Okay, so, you, so I, ha I have to, maybe that's my fault, right? And this guy, he asked, uh, so what's the mark of the beast, brother? That's a great question, right? And then I, uh, I'm responding to this comment here. He, I say, no, no, you have to establish exactly what the mark of the beast is before you can claim a saved person can receive it and lose their salvation. So uh, I'm sure you're like me. You've heard that the mark of the beast is a microchip. Oh, and some people say it's a vaccine. And it's neither. It can't be either. Okay, first of all, let's take a look at the, where it's mentioned in Revelation. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay, so first of all, it says he causes all. That all would mean all, wouldn't it? Me and you and everybody. Okay, depends on how you look at that, right? And... Uh, free and bond, we are we are free, and those who are not saved are bond. No, well, regardless, it says the mark will be in their right hand or in their foreheads. Nobody's getting a microchip in their foreheads. Nobody. Nobody's getting a vaccine in their foreheads. Nobody. All right. So, both of those ideas are wrong. And. So that's why I asked the question, what exactly is the mark of the beast? And of course, I contend it's a spiritual mark, uh, just like we that are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Uh, we have a spiritual mark. Uh, so also does the opposite side have a spiritual mark. Okay, and... Uh, this is in reference to the work and the mentality, if you will, of the unbeliever and their, uh, their worship or admiration of man and man's government. Because the beast represents a king and his kingdom. And there's the... Satan's kingdom, if you will, or man's kingdom, and then there's the kingdom of Jesus Christ. All right, so we got two different kingdoms. The mark of the beast is representative of the man's kingdom, not God's kingdom, if that makes any sense. Okay, so in order to say that you can lose your salvation after you've taken the mark of the beast would be to say... Uh, that uh, what Jesus did was not enough. Okay, it's you're essentially saying the mark of the beast is greater than Jesus Christ. Now let me show you something here. Okay, I don't know if you've ever read Second Corinthians thirteen. 
Um, let's take a look. I'd like to read this whole thing for you, but I probably ain't got time. So let's start at the top. Just read first five, uh, the first uh, five verses. This is the third time that Paul's writing to the church in Corinthia. Or in Corinth, or whatever, wherever that's. Okay, this is the third time I am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. I told you before, I foretell you as if I were present the second time and being absent now I write to them which heretofore have sinned and to all other that if I come again I will not spare since ye seek a proof of Christ speaking in me which to you word is not weak but is mighty in you. For though he was crucified through weakness Yet he liveth by the power of God, for we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Right, so you're either Jesus Christ is in you and you're saved, or you're reprobate and you're not saved. Okay, but I trust that you shall know that we are not reprobates. We that are saved are not reprobates. Okay, now I pray to God that ye do that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, because you know, our parents shouldn't be, we shouldn't present ourselves superior, right? But that we should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. Okay, so meaning in a humble sort of way, what we should do is be honest, all right? For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. All right, so anyways, I want to focus on this uh, just to make it very plain, how that Jesus Christ is in you. Because you've heard people say, well, um, you know, because, uh, you know, nobody can pluck us out of the Father's hand, right? Now you've heard of that. Uh, my Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Now people will say, well, I can, uh, nobody can, maybe nobody will pluck me out of my Father's hand, but I can pull myself out of my Father's hand. And uh, one, you know, the thing that they say is, well, if I stop believing, I mean, that's dangerous. That's dangerous because how do you know what you believe is exactly right? And if you don't believe exactly right, then aren't you condemning yourself? All right, so we established in 2 Corinthians 13 that Jesus Christ is in you. Once you're saved, he's in you. So let's go to, uh, let's say, um, let's go here. Second Timothy 2, if we believe not, yet he abideth faithful. He cannot deny himself. So let's say you don't believe. Well, Jesus Christ is still in you, and he cannot deny himself. All right, so it, once you're saved, let's say, oh, I'm not going to believe no more. Well, Jesus Christ is still in you, and he cannot deny himself. There is no possible way for you to lose Uh, your salvation, no possible way, impossible, no matter how you spin it, no matter how you look at it, uh, it's not possible, and Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him, so God is in you once you are saved, once you are saved, you are a new creature therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new so you can have peace knowing that once you're saved you're always saved nothing can take that away from you